Betrayal. John Smith defeats Alpha and Delta. Eminence in Shadow. Cut content from last week from Anime Room Pie. Let's see what he has to say. In continuation of my Eminence in Shadow episode breakdown series, Season 2, Episode 6 is titled John Smith, and we'll be seeing just how much damage the counterfeit money has done to the market of the Midgar Kingdom. Do you guys actually care about the economic damage that the counterfeit money has done to the Midgar Kingdom? Along with what? I think a lot of people don't give a shit about the economic, like, uh, restrictions, right? People, when the average people watching Amazon in Shadow have been thinking about, oh, how is the hyperinflation, in, you know, impacting the, the economy of Midgar Kingdom? No, people are thinking, ha ha, I want to see John Smith versus Alpha. Ha ha, I want to see John Smith versus Delta. You know, I'm, I'm like that too. What Mitsugoshi and the major corporate alliance are doing to stop the circulation. As usual, the anime did make some creative changes to certain aspects from the light novels. Yeah, I heard the Delta fight was actually anime only. So I will be discussing about those along with breaking down the episode. It goes without saying, if you haven't watched the episode yet, here's a spoiler warning just in case. If you enjoyed this cut content slash breakdown video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel as well. It really helps. Like the video! Now then, episode 6 will be adapting chapter 6 and a portion of the epilogue from volume 3 of the light novel. It continues directly from where episode 5 stopped after the Team Shadow Garden sent to deal with John Smith has been defeated and they are now delivering their report to Alpha and Gamma back in mid school. Even if this is like an L report, I hear Gamma and Alpha were actually proud that they returned back safely and they acknowledge, you know, 664, 665, 666, you know, this group trio as like an elite squad of the no-names, right? Of the no-names, they're actually pretty fucking good, right? Goshi. This entire interaction pretty much followed the light novel, even the part where number 666 wanting another chance to fight John Smith. His power is on par with yours, the seven shade. That was actually kind of hype when like Oriano straight up said like, no, the John Smith guy is stronger than you. And then arguing with her team leader 664 were the same as well. As they were arguing- This girl's the one though. Of this group, I like this girl the most. She's very soft-spoken. She's always eating something or always sleeping. She's the funniest. And having finished reporting on their mission, 665 would drag both her teammates away. Afterwards, Alpha and Gamma would send Delta to hunt down John Smith and it's here we get some anime original scenes. We learn that Zeta and number 559 have a- Important shit, right? Don't spoil me again. Don't spoil me, but this is for the next talk. And that girl is from the trailer. I remember that girl from the trailer. Currently being sent by Alpha to investigate something related to the Cult of Diablos. However, because this wasn't mentioned in the light novel, it's unknown what they were investigating, but if I had to take- we never know what Zeta's doing. Zeta's just doing all these different side missions by herself. It's the point where I start thinking, you know how they say the Epsilon is the best one at like spy and espionage and stuff like that? What's the difference between Zeta? I feel like Zeta goes on more missions than Epsilon. Take a guess. It might be connected to the story that will take place after the John Smith arc, which involves the Orana Kingdom. Also, I found it wholesome that Alpha wants to quickly resolve the counterfeit situation so that they can finally spend time with Shadow, which honestly makes the betrayal that Aww. comes later in the episode even more gut-wrenching. The betrayal, but at the same time, like Shadow's not even thinking that. But Alpha's like, why are you leaving me? I've spent my entire life for you. And please don't leave me. And Shadow's like, <laughs> I'm John Smith right now. Thank you for the role play. Moving on, we see John Smith guarding the train, but the episode did not mention that a few days have passed since Mitsugoshi last sent anyone to deal with him and he was getting bored of just waiting. That's when he sends the arrival of Delta. Regarding his encounter with Delta, there were some creative changes made to the scene. In the, the light novel, when Delta Delta approaches John Smith, she immediately discovered his true identity despite- Nah, so there was no fight, so she immediately just sniffed him out. But I think it was better for Delta to like, fight first, right? Even if it was like a 10 second fight, it was still hype. ...but him intentionally taking multiple baths. And again, he took multiple baths in perfume, because like, I made the comment of like, what if she's a beast girl? She can use her sense of nose to, you know, find who this person is. But it's like, even despite dousing himself in perfume, Delta still knew and covering himself in large amount of perfume to hide his own scent. However, in the anime, when she approaches him, a fight broke out between them which was an anime original sequence. The fight was done quite well, showcasing <laughs> Delta's insane combat instinct and how she easily dodges the steel wires of John with just her intuition. She even blew apart the train carriage, understanding that the wires would need surfaces to connect with. But yeah, so that's the thing. So how the fuck do the wires work outside the train when they're on top? Because like, think about it. A wire needs to have like a starting and an end point to connect, right? Right? But then think about it. How the fuck is the wires working when we're on top of the train fighting Alpha? You ever think about that? The wires were still everywhere, acting as if they were connected to something. But it's, it's open space. I don't think we're going to have to worry about that. Uh, despite that, Delta still couldn't defeat John and she was buried under the debris. As she was preparing to do a super secret elite agent. 
He never says this in the anime though. Destroyer of all. Harbinger of reverse. Monologue. Delta realizes it was her boss and her reaction was adorable. And I found it funny that after he was discovered, he changes back to his usual sit voice because that's yeah. how he normally talks to his doggo. Anyways, Delta saying she wants to report back to Alpha and him trying to stop her by explaining his super secret elite agent mission. Delta does look a way cuter in the uh, in the manga though, huh? Mission happened in a similar fashion to the light novel, although the episode did remove a minor part where he. Yeah, minor part like grabbing her tail like that. I want these scenes in the anime. Unintentionally grab her tail. Also, it was cute that he was giving her head pass the entire time and her Aww. tail wagging with greater intensity when he promised. Greater intensity. He's right, cause that tail was like moving like this, and it was like. Just to give her a reward was cute as well. And seeing him trying to make sure Delta doesn't misunderstand his reward, knowing she would likely request something excessive definitely adds to the humor. With that, John sends Delta away to the lawless city to hunt Juggernaut Black in the Jugga Black Jugga. Tower. There was even the post credit scene of the destroyed Black We will watch, we will watch Kage Jitsu one of these days on stream or something. We'll figure something out. But yes, Black Jugga Jugga dead. Tower and also in the spin off Kage Jitsu, Delta was shown to have decapitated Jugga. Kind of spoils, but look how cute Delta is! Look at this! You know, at the end, I honestly feel bad for him, a victim of cis Chunibyo fantasies. Then going back to Miss Goshi, the sequence of Gamma informing Alpha about Delta's fate, and also the counterfeit money situation was was dead. similar to what happened in the light novel, although the anime did lose some of the emotional weight for this particular scene. So in the light novel, Alpha oh, was hair. initially filled with sorrow after seeing the scraps of fur from Delta's tail. Wow, Alpha actually got shook like that? I didn't see- No, Alpha was like- I think she had her fist against the window when I cracked in the anime, right? But realizing how frail she sounded and having to comfort Gamma, she manages to compose herself. Furthermore, the internalized thoughts of Alpha regretting not listening to the warnings of 666 about John Smith and her decision of sending Delta to handle him alone, and how she has always prepared herself emotionally for someone to eventually fall were removed as well. Is someone gonna actually die? I, are, are we setting up for a character death here? I just don't think Eminence in Shadow is gonna handle that kind of topic. It doesn't make sense. It's not that kind of show. Personally, it would have been nice. If, if anything, I could see like Shadow like faking his own death and coming back really cool with. If the episode kept these moments because it actually provides some decent character perspective for Alpha, like showing more of a compassionate side along with the professionalism she has as the second in and the vulnerability, right? The professionalism, like, she has that side too. But the vulnerability from Alpha when she's crying against like John Smith, I think that's a side of Alpha we hardly ever see. Man of Shadow Garden. Having said that, there were also some changes made to the interaction between Gatan and the Cow's messengers. In the light novel, after learning that the counterfeit money currently in circulation did not belong to the Cow, Gatan had assumed it was done by Miss Goshi. He believed okay. they must have seen through their plans and were now expediting the credit collapse because he assumed they have already accumulated enough capital to survive and they are now just waiting for the MCA to fall to gain a complete monopoly over the marketplace. I went in the episode instead of assuming- Again, more, more finance stuff that you guys definitely care about, right? This kind of stuff you're definitely paying attention during the show, right? Assuming it was Miss Goshi, Gatan learned that it was a man named John Smith who was behind the counterfeit money. Furthermore, Gatan would kill the messengers as well and orders Gutter to use the MCA's influence to impose a nationwide search and blockade to find the source. Those were mainly the differences, and the only aspect they kept was how the cult still hasn't moved their assets to a safe place and they will be suffering severe losses from this credit crisis. Now, and this leads into the next arc with Zeta kind of sniping out what's going on with the cult with uh, what's the other girl, like the Victoria girl. Continuing from that, we will get another anime original scene involving Alexa. This is anime original? That means they really want to flesh out like the, the path that, you know, our Iris and Alexia are going because I feel like they pretty much like swap position compared to season one, right? Alexia just, sorry, Alexia is like rising up. She's actually smiling. She's all she's doing all these different things and improving her life. And Iris is like the exact opposite, which is really interesting to see considering how these characters were in season one. Alexia and Iris meeting, which does not really have much plot significance other than to show Alexia's character grow. Damn, this is actual game art too. Alexia, look at this. Shadow's swordsmanship as like a fucking stand behind Alexia. That's actually kind of... That's, that's like, I was thinking to myself, and you guys have not really spoiled me, but you've already implied that Alexia will be important in this show in the future. And, you know, there were scenes where Alexia was still training with Shadow, or Sid. Alexia even directly mentioned after seeing I'm Atomic that his swordsmanship is so simple yet beautiful, and it like, kind of like remembers, it, 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 it remembers her of her own swordsmanship, right? So she could straight up become really strong 
if she had the slime, if she, I mean, if she got the, if she got cure from possession, then obviously she'd be really strong, right? But like the fact that she's mirroring Shadow's swordsmanship, it gives me hope for the future of like how she can kind of become OP. I thought I did enjoy seeing Alexia trying her best to gain the knowledge and skills needed to overcome her own problems. Okay, I don't know if reading books is gonna make your swordsmanship better though. Problems, but it seems that her resolve has angered and hurt her sister's ego, which mm. not surprisingly aligns with the personality of Iris. And if you know what happens to the Midgar sisters later in the light novel, this that's crazy because I thought Alexi was always the insecure one in season one. Iris was like this perfect older sister who's better at everything, and Alexia's trying to catch up, but she never could, so Alexia distanced herself from Iris. And Iris at that point seemed like a perfect static character, but now it's different. Iris is the one that's insecure now. Isn't it crazy how the story's going? This scene in the episode was slightly hinting at the start of their declining relationship. Also, nerdy Alexia looks quite good, don't you agree? Eh, the glasses in make any her softer. Case, the sequence with Beta delivering her regular report to Shadow was somewhat similar to the. Double digit inflation. I see double digit inflation here, alright. What the fuck? Why is she more stacked in the manga? The light novel, but again with some minor differences. For example, the anime added some comedy into this scene like how he was freezing because he intentionally left his balcony door open to look more cooler. Quite okay, so he was just cool. He was just cold, but so opening the door and having the wind flow in just looked cooler. So I was like wondering, why the fuck are you intentionally opening the door? How does this make you cool? But I guess that's cool. Quite literally. They also made Shadow taking notes into a running gag throughout the episode, but he was mostly just writing nonsense. Another change was Beta informing Shadow about Delta, namely Beta explaining her own relationship with Delta and how she always viewed Delta like Aww. her little sister was removed. <laughs> Even here, Delta bit her hand. I think there's a little bit of blood coming out here when he was feeding Delta. Look, Delta in the manga is so cute. Oops. Furthermore, Shadow's reaction towards the news was different as well. In the light novel, he treated it more casually whereas in the episode, he was visibly nervous about them finding Delta. Black jugga jugga. In both versions, he did say the same thing about how Delta went to a better place. Better place. Black jugga jugga. That said, I did find it funny that Beta's line about the counterfeit money causing inflation and how it has reached a point that it must be addressed at the state level will be stolen by Shadow later in the episode. And Shadow showing Beta his notes being written with five different languages was quite on brand with his character as That's well. Super he even stuff. gives her a note to decipher and if you do not know, the note actually explains his true intentions. Oh? But anyways, in the scene that followed, it was in his- Is the mask here upside down? Some people are saying this is the design of the mask, and some people are saying no, it's upside down. I I, I don't really know. John Smith persona guarding the train again and his interaction with the MCA agents went quite differently in the episode as compared to the light novel. For context, the MCA has mobilized all their forces to search for John Smith, and in the light novel, they did eventually find a carriage carrying the counterfeit money, but unsurprisingly, they were quickly Ooh. dispatched by John Smith. Bro, you gotta, you gotta say your line before they die. Like, you're saying this shit, but they're already dead before they can hear. Destroyer of all. Harbinger of rebirth. As for how it happened in the episode, it doesn't actually fight any MCA agents. Instead, they're only blocking the train tracks and it was easily destroyed by him. The light novel version was definitely more interesting and impactful. Yeah, cut as them off. The extent, the MCA is I think the anime version was just like funnier. The light novel version is probably cooler. Willing to go in order to stop John Smith. With that said, John's encounter okay, okay. with Alpha how the fuck are the strings gate? Okay, pay careful to the fight here that's gonna happen on top of the train where there are no different walls to attach your strings to, okay? Somewhat followed the light novel, but it was more watered down and a few minor details that made the fight more impactful were removed as well. First off, after he dealt with the MCA agents, instead of him sensing Alpha's presence nearby like we see in the light novel, she would immediately attack him on the train. Aye, aye. Also, Alpha's first attack in the episode was- Look at these strings! Where? Where- where is this going? Where are you attached to? Manipulate the strings with magic. Look, look, look. There's no point to actually go into deeper uh, breakdown of how these strings are working. But if you really think about it, you really think about it. How the fuck are all these strings like this, bro? It doesn't make sense. It's only blocked by him, whereas for the light String novel, like a whip? attack Maybe. and miss because he was moving at such high speeds that he left behind an after image. It will continue their battle, and the episode did retain the part where Alpha masterfully analyzes. Yeah, I Johnson. hear, right? It does look like he is just swinging the, the strings around, right? They're not like flat strings that's like marked, you know, like traps like in, in like a room. Like patterns and being able to notice his thinner wires were hidden between thicker wires so that she can easily dodge his attacks. Again, big point that anime aliens don't know. John Smith, not only does he have visible wires, he has invisible wires that's hidden as a layer just as a bait 
just that when you think that you got over the true wires, no, the true wires then attack. So in a similar fashion to the light novel, the episode will show how Alpha discovered the true identity of John Smith through the way he moves and the dexterity of his technique. Following this revelation of Shadow's betrayal Misform. and not wanting to be a hindrance anymore, Alpha begins to charge her magic, and it's here we see the misform technique that Beta had learned from her encounter with the Blood Queen Elizabeth being Everybody that encountered Blood Queen Elizabeth should be able to now use Mist Form, right? Oriana could technically do it, and all of them could also technically turn into Aurora, except Alpha, because Alpha was... I don't know, did Alpha inject herself with progenitor blood? I'm not sure how that works. ...utilized by Alpha, and it seems that her mastery of this technique was quite high, because she could turn specific parts of her body Ooh. into mist. Her limbs there, hold up, did you see that? It got sliced open because it's like a Logia fruit in one piece. Like, look, look at her arm or something, her leg right here, right? ...mastery of this technique was quite high. Boom, mist. Me like, the limbs just gets cut off, that's kind of fucked up. That John Smith would try to kill Alpha like that's fucked up. Because she could turn specific parts of her body into mist similar to Elizabeth, she even managed to damage John numerous times, just like in the light novel. Apparently, John Smith almost could have died. Like he was getting attacked with some crazy attacks from Alpha that the point was like life threatening. Unfortunately, John is still stronger and he simply blasted Alpha away with a shockwave. Shockwave with the sword though, right? And again, I thought this is like a different type of sword, but the manga, it ha it's, it's the same slime sword we've seen in the anime. It's just a little bit more detailed in the manga. Because she had no mass in this state, but it was still impressive nonetheless, being one of the few people able to damage him in a real battle. Additionally, yeah. I have to commend the voice- I mean, who's the strongest in this world after Shadow, right? It's, is it safe to say Alpha's the strongest? There's gotta be other opponents, right? That are stronger than Alpha, I would imagine, but pretty much Alpha is the strongest of Shadow Garden. So Aurora, you're right, yeah. But, or like Alpha being almost like having, you know, putting up this good of a fight, it makes sense, it makes sense. ...for Alpha because you can just hear the anguish in her voice after finding out about Shadow's betrayal, but their fight still lacks some of the emotional impact from the light novel because- I'm dumb, so I have no idea what you're thinking. That is straight up what John Smith should be saying. John Smith should be straight up like Alpha. This isn't that deep. You're having a fucking mental breakdown thinking that I'm leaving you for some deeper reason, but I'm just fucking around here trying to be super elite agents. Oh my god, Alpha. It actually gives a better insight on Alpha's mental state as compared to the episode. Like I guess she just has huge like abandonment issues, huh? I mean, if you looked at her and even in the manga panels here, like you, you always just keep marching far ahead on your own. And, and all I can do is watch it from behind. Like she has huge abandonment issues. Alpha's mental state as compared to the episode. To explain, even though she thinks that Shadow has truly betrayed them and was responsible for the supposed death of Delta, she is still begging for him to not abandon her. I actually f I think this vulnerable side of Alpha is something that's very rare and we hardly ever get to see in the anime. ...found it to be quite disturbing and heartbreaking how much devotion she has for Shadow, because it seems that regardless of the abuse, she still doesn't want to leave him, almost like an addiction which wasn't really emphasized. The abuse. What is this fucking Stockholm saying? You were just abusing Alpha and she's just so fucked in the head that she can't leave us anymore? ...in the episode. And I honestly feel bad for Alpha because in the light novel, after ending the fight, Shadow even praised her for how strong she has become and I was she quite is. disappointed they did not keep this part in the oh. episode. This tiny- The anime actually didn't say that the confirmation, like, like, it wasn't that mean to Alpha. Like, Shadow specifically said, like, Alpha, you've gotten very strong, but the anime, it's like, you get the fuck out of my face and we just- we just tossed another girl off the train now she's just in the fucking train road, the, the rail tracks, in the cold, in the, in the dark, just crying to herself, bro. The detail actually adds so much to their relationship and that Shadow does care about Alpha and the girl. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I gotta use this as a thumbnail one of these days. Whereas here in the episode, he just feels like a cold and uncaring sociopath. Yeah. Nevertheless, after the fight, John meets with Yukime again, and they have accumulated a large amount of gold thanks to their counterfeit money. But the episode doesn't mention that they are now removing all traces of their involvement, including tearing down the counterfeit factory. It was also here that John repeats the lines he stole from Beta. Apparently, in the light novel, he did this because oh, he wanted to impress up. Yukime with how knowledgeable he Like, like financial knowledge of what Beta was saying, like John Smith just repeating to Yukime here, okay. The, these things are pretty funny too whenever Yukime gets like a misunderstanding. He was. Furthermore, the part where Yukime are deciding to lick Liquidate the real MCA bill she accumulated in person, and John questioning her reasoning wasn't shown in the episode. This was actually why Yukime decided to share a backstory with him, like we see in the episode, oh. and the contents of Get the time. story pretty much followed the light novel. Although a minor portion about her first meeting with Getan when he came to rescue her after a village was attacked did get removed. To summarize what Yukime said, the god, the warrior, right? The three warriors, the three heroes of uh, I don't know of the cult of Diablo's uh, lore is human, elf. 
beast. This is the beast Shiva, right? Basically, after I, the hero, I, I think that's what they mentioned. Hero Shiva had fallen. Yeah, Many yeah, of the, the hero stronger Tyrion troop clans started to fight among each other, with the weaker ones being dragged into the conflict. And to survive, the Spirit Fox clan would form an alliance with the Great Wolf clan by having Yukima and Geta marry each other. However, before their marriage, their clan was apparently caught in a conflict between two major Tyrion troop clans with Geta. So like Geta, like got coerced, he needed power, and then Cult of Diablos approached them with those pills, and he's like, all right, now you gotta make sure everyone takes this shit. And though he basically just got manipulated due to desire for power to protect his village, which in turn, he just, I don't know, he, he ended up killing his own village at the end. Geta and Yukime being the only survivor. Shiva's not the Beast King hero? Oh, Shiva might know what? It's not? I, I, I thought it was. Okay, never mind. It was then revealed that Gatan had pledged his loyalty to the cult and wanted to use the Tears of Diablos to make their people stronger. But because Yukima's mother rejected his proposal, the others refused as well, so Gatan blamed her for the deaths of their people, and he was the one that actually- Here. I need to protect this village. You guys need to take this pill so you won't die. Oh, you won't take this pill? Now I will kill all of you. Then I will blame the mom that I killed for the death of everyone that I personally caused. Yes, makes sense to me. Yes. He killed Yukime's mother. After this revelation, he forced Yukime to take the pills, but she refused, so he attacked her as well, resulting in the scars on her back. And what happened next wasn't actually stylish shown in the episode, Bandit Slayer. But Sid in his stylish Bandit Slayer disguise will attack. Yeah, it's not a spoiler. I mean, you can even hear stylish Bandit Slayer's like a deranged laugh when he shows up in the flashback in the recent one. Get done, and in addition to that, he was the one that healed Yukime's injuries. But continuing on, this was why Yukime vowed to exact her revenge on Getan by taking everything away from him. And we learned that she started working as a battlefield prostitute and worked her way up to eventually becoming one of the monarchs within the lawless city. So with that explained, I So her goal wasn't just to get all this power and fame, it's ultimately to use to her revenge against Getan. So if we defeat Getan, then what? What does Yukime have to live for? Maybe she can join us. Really enjoyed the way the episode adapted Yukime's backstory and the aesthetic choice they went with. Missed form? <laughs> pretty cool. I'll take that over the sword. The, the, the martial arts blow like that, that was pretty cool. <laughs> Goodbye, thoughts. Uh, yeah, this was all the differences. Another great video from Anime Room Pie. And on top, on top of, go like the video and subscribe to his channel if you haven't. But on topic of like Yukimi, right? After the vengeance is dead, like, what does she have to live for? It'd be interesting to see if she could like stick with us or something and we'll move on but we have another eminence and shadow episode reaction coming up tonight sometime so stick around for that but guys we do these reactions live on stream 7 a.m pst on youtube and twitch hope to see you there